Good morning, cinephiles. It's me, Todd. We're going to another FYC event back at Harmony Gold, just like last night. And today it's for another Apple TV Plus series, Slow Horses with Gary Oldman. So are you ready? Uh, let's go. Oh, hello, hi there. It's me, Todd. I'm in the studio. And today's sponsor is myself. The best way to support the channel is to subscribe to my Patreon, where not only do you become a member of the community, you get early access to the B-side videos as well as watch-throughs of movies or TV shows we are covering, and other movie reactions and commentaries from a filmmaker's perspective. And if that's out of your budget, no worries. Just hit that like button. It really does help out the channel with the algorithm. And of course, subscribe to get the latest videos delivered directly to you. Hit that notification bell to be alerted of the newest uploads. And please, share these videos with your friends and family. And now, back to our regularly scheduled program. And as you can see, it's another cold and rainy day here in LA as we're on our way back up to sunset. So I don't have the GoPro on, so I can't uh, do my normal setup because it's a magnet that I attach to the windshield and the windshield wipers will <laughs> knock the magnet right off and it doesn't end up too good. And just a quick explanation of what an FYC event is for those that are new here. What is FYC? FYC stands for For Your Consideration. And what they do at these events is they bring all the people that can vote for the Emmys to these events, they play an episode of the show that they're submitting for Emmys, then they bring the cast out, and they do a little Q&A, and then they have a little after party. And sometimes the stars will come out, and you can take pictures and talk to them more. So that's what an FYC event is. And that's where we're headed right now for Slow Horses. We're back here at Harmony Gould. It is pure madness in here today for check-in because everyone's trying to avoid being stuck in the rain like we last night. Slowly but surely, going to Slow Horses. <laughs> Let's find us a seat here. Who's seen Slow Horses? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Glad that Mick could go from wild horses to slow horses uh, with that, that thing. Um, <laughs> my name's Peter White. I'm the television editor at Deadline. Um, so lovely to see so many of you uh, watching that fantastic episode. Um, as you can tell from the accent, uh, I'm British, but I've lived in, in LA for a few years. Um, and we, we ordered specially some uh, some British weather for today for a very British show. So uh, I hope you'll appreciate that. The cast were very pleased that, uh, that it would rain while they've been here. So. Um, <laughs> Looking forward to an exciting discussion with, with the cast here. I'm going to introduce them as they come in, and then we'll get to some questions. So, uh, Khadif Kirwan, Christopher Chun, Rosalind Lazar, Dustin Denry Burns, Saskia Reeves, and Gary Oldman. start with you. Uh, straight in. Jackson Lamb, Slough House, um, you're described as slovenly rude and apparently drunk most of the time. <laughs> but it seems pretty fun to, to play. It seems like a pretty fun character. I know you've played spies in the past, but none quite like Jackson Lamb, right? No, it's wonderful to have this sort of um, freedom of the license to, um, to be self-nauseous. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. You know, when I when I get the script and I have, you know, a, a line that's a put down or an insult, I just can't wait to see their faces. <laughs> <laughs> have you played anyone quite as obnoxious as Jackson before? 
Um, well, he's knowingly obnoxious, isn't he? I mean, he, 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 he yeah, purposely is, is winding, sort of constantly winding people up. Yeah, he's a I classic mean, British wind-up merchant. Right? Yeah, and he gives the impression that he doesn't care. And I think probably he may care the most. Yeah, he, he shows his yeah. loyalty in other ways, right? Yeah, and he's loyal to these guys um, above anything else, yeah. certainly. He's, he, he, uh, I, I think he has a very... Um, it, it's one of those things, you know, here I am, take me or leave me. But he, he certainly has a very, um, a, a very strong moral compass in, 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 in that respect. And he is very, uh, very loyal, even though he thinks they're a bunch of losers. Um, <laughs> but they're your losers, as, they, as he are, says in the show. But they are my losers. Yeah, so he's, he's very protective of his slow horses. How do you guys feel about being uh, Jackson's losers? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sasuke, you're closest. I'm going to start with you, I'm afraid. Um, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Loser. <laughs> She's a very interesting character because uh, she tolerates him because there's another layer to Catherine, which is she's grateful that she's got a job and that she's actually survived and um, they have an interesting dynamic don't they Catherine very much so yeah. they, they they go way back in fact what's lovely about the show is you've got characters of lamb and standish in sort of juxtaposition to the younger crew so sometimes i feel like these two share a history they have an understanding of a previous experience of mi5 and and like the first opening sequence of this series you've got Phil Davis playing what was his name? Dickie Bow. Dickie Bow, that's right, Richard Bow. Yeah. Who who's ended up working in some shitty pawn shop in Soho. <laughs> but the past catches up with him really quick and um yeah I, I, I love that sort of experience of the characters and uh, she has to put up with a lot but she can give as good as she gets yeah the, the grown-ups in the room perhaps i guess is, is where i also think she's probably the best spy out of all of them <laughs> but she's just a secretary so yeah she keeps her cards well close to her chest I, i'm gonna ask some questions that spoil some of the later episodes but but certainly in the later part of season two she's shown as a much better spy than, yeah. than perhaps she's been first led you're, you're first led to believe right? yeah yeah Oh, they haven't, you haven't seen the, the rest of it, have you? I think it's, it sounds like most people have, so... They have, they have. Oh, they haven't. I think most people... We're not have. allowed to talk about the, the next episode, are we? We're going we're gonna to allude to some of the things going on, because it be, it's going to be time to, to discuss yeah, no, some I, of this I, without... Yeah, no, I know, that's Catherine's Queen's Gambit moment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Yes, and, and I guess that all of you are in Slough House for fucking up, essentially, in, in some form, for various reasons, some worse than others. Um, although I'm not sure, uh, I, I believe uh, entirely it's just about gambling um, towards, uh, towards the end. Yeah. He also seems to make phone calls. Most people in, in London just do that on their phones. So I'm, I'm wondering what he's hiding, uh, hiding there. Well, um, yeah. It, we, we, go, we go to see quite a bit more of that in the later seasons, but um, I think he's just addicted to his phone more than anything. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk to anyone, so lose yourself in your phone. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And you're the newest member of this group of losers. Um, how was that coming into, you know, the, this... Not so sure that they particularly had a, a rapport, but uh, they, had, they had a working relationship, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's like starting school halfway through the term, and everyone's already started and made friends, but to be honest with you, it was very easy. I slinked in there and I was um, welcomed with open arms and a foot on my ass. So, yeah, it was it, lovely. It, it's funny you said it. It's that Ho is the only one of us that didn't mess up. Ho was taken out of MI5 because he's obnoxious. There's <laughs> nothing like me in real life. <laughs> 
aspiring Jackson Lamb in him, I guess, in that sense. Except yeah, he knows how to use the computer. Well, he knows, and yes, he, he couldn't, if I'm my case, really, but he does. He, he, he's so good at the keyboard. He's well, so good with the, with the, uh, but he, you, you know why you're not in Slaughterhouse. house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I always thought that Ho had a lot in common with Lamb, and he sees himself as his equal. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I have to work with? <laughs> <laughs> Illusion. <laughs> you, uh, Roddy does get out of the office uh, this season in a way that he's didn't, good. Right? He did in season one, right? <laughs> yeah. Is he? Is he? Is he? <laughs> What's going on? I think we're all watching a different show. <laughs> <laughs> She's not here, but it does appear that someone else saved your ass in the in the. Final semantics. So. <laughs> Did you enjoy being off the the computer for once? So you get you know you get this moment that you were sort of going on your own mission, I guess. It's yeah, it was really satisfying actually. I mean, it's um, it's nice to put him in different situations, like in 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 real life. It, uh, I think having spent so much time behind the computer and being able to figure out and justify why he would go out into the field to help you know, the rest of the slow horses, but really just to kind of beat himself up because no one else is going to take care of business yeah. except for her. <laughs> Other than just playing computer games and masturbating in the office. <laughs> Not in the office. <laughs> in Lamb's office, yes. <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> I masturbate in <laughs> Lambs Office. Um, you two have a, a burgeoning relationship in, in towards the end of season one, which we see in, in season two is still carrying on. Um, it seems to be quite a, a genuine, I know there's sort of some trouble um, amongst that, which, which ultimately, um, I guess, gets you into some bother. He dies. I die. <laughs> you can't get into more bother than that. I mean, I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> but it's nice to come to LA. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you said that. I didn't want to be the one to, to reveal it. But... No, I loved working on the show. It was really great to work with these guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now that you're dead, but um, you do have this integral, regardless of. If you time, your death is, is a, a major part of season two. Yeah. Uh, as someone who used to cycle around Old Street, I'm surprised. Me too. You yeah. Die yeah. earlier, given the roads in cyclists in London are in London. insane. They're just swarming around. It's it's really dangerous, and they don't wear helmets. But it turns they out deserve it, to die. Turns out it might not have been a, a cycling accident. Uh, how did you feel about uh, his death? I mean, evidently you would have known that this was coming. It's nice to sort of play a role that sort of has that sort of impact and his sort of journey. It was nice for me to come into series two and us to have this sort of pick up where we left off and we've sort of moved on in our relationship, we're living together and it was nice to have that sort of dual Are thing. Are we living together? Oh, we weren't, were we? <laughs> we're, we're about to buy a hat. We're about we're to, buy to buy a hat, buy a that's house. right. Yeah, I really can't remember it now. Um, in Leighton for half a million. Yeah. 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 And it's just, it's what, and it's all those little details and that sort of, it is so true to life. It really is, you know, living in London and looking at properties and trying to get on the ladder and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's nice to have that parallel with an in, intricate spy sort of story. And it, that's what was so good about the books as well. And it's so nice to play that because it's just real. You just really play, well, you always want to play truth, but it's such a nice way in to this genre. As, you know. Do you think Min was a good spy? No. <laughs> I think he... Oh God, he's, he's a bit useless. He's, you know, he's oh. smart, he can get by, but he's just not quite got the, the goods. Whereas you... I was going to say, Louisa yeah, is you, a little bit better of a spy, right? Yeah, but you, yeah. Lighten up, you lighten up the room. I mean, at least for Louisa. Mm. Maybe it's just Dustin. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that's why they make a good match, because they are, they're so... They're so different. They're so different, and they offer something to each other that I think both of them are lacking. You know, Louisa could certainly do with lightening up and, and loosening up, and she's very rigid. You know, um, and I think that's what that's what kind of works between the mm. two of them. We miss you, Dust. We do. Yeah. yeah, I miss you guys. Do you, and and Bin's death has a big impact on 
on Louisa in, in season two. Do you think there's a sort of lust for vengeance that, that plays a part in that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it all happens so quickly. It all happens over like the course of two days, so she doesn't have any time to, to grieve. She goes straight back into a job and I mean, I'm sure we've all, we've all lost someone in, in our lives and grief kind of works in really weird ways. Um, she just doesn't have any time to process it. And so her energy is kind of displaced into fighting and finding out, you know, why, why the Russians killed him. Um, and that, that sort of follows through, I mean, we can't say too much about the next season, but sometimes when a life event like that happens to you, it can really change the fabric of your being. Do you know what I mean? Although most people aren't two days after losing someone having to stop a terrorist attack by the Russians. Yeah, so true. Really <laughs> but that was that, that scene with um, Louisa and Lamb where she she's trying to keep her job. I really like that scene because, you know, you, you see the compassion in you. You've been there. You've lost loads of people. And there was quite a nice little connection between the two of them. Yeah, Jackson's seen this before, hasn't he, Gary? So you've seen, you know, that, that impact yeah. of death. I, but yeah, I think in the, uh, I think it's in the first series, um, first season, that he says to River, um, get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, because you see a lot more of it. And if, you, you know, you've got to get a thicker skin. And, uh, I mean, the, 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 it, you were talking about some, the, the revenge, I mean, the main thrust or the theme of the, of season two is it, 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 that that is its it's under that umbrella. Yeah, isn't for, it? for your for, for Jackson for as me, well. Like, yeah. for, for Louisa, yeah. yeah, it's about loss and yeah, yeah, so Dickie in, in Jackson's case and so forth. Um, You've got your, your hair hidden under the hat tonight, but the, the hair is wonderful in, in this show. It's, it's uh, probably the greasiest hair on, on television. The, the raincoat is filthy, um, which he's so good. And you eating the bowl of Kung Pao chicken. Each time you do it, you seem to make it filthier and filthier. <laughs> yeah, we noodles had, um, going places noodles shouldn't go. We had, um, that was, we shot that in the morning. I'd, I think I ended up, because we had angles coming in and then over, overs where you could see me eating, then the singles, then from the other side of the room, I think we ended up doing, I, well it's typical isn't it, I, I ate 17 bowls of noodles <laughs> and then we broke for lunch. <laughs> and they said alright that's lunch everyone. And <laughs> no, I really hope they brought some Thai in that day for... Uh, oh, for no, it was all pot noodle stuff. It was the prop guys putting... It's pot noodle, you know, cheapo stuff, put, putting, you know, hot water on it from a kettle. You're not ordering Kung Pao chicken at the weekend when you're, no, when you're not working, no, are you? I must say, though, I didn't, I didn't go near a noodle for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Had you read the books before you took the job? I had not. Have you read the, obviously Mick's written quite a few books, yeah. uh, have you read <coughs> On After? I've, I have, I've not completed the whole yeah. series. And you're, what are you, you're, you're reading now? What, oh, the third time round. The, the of the whole time. series yeah. of the books? Just, okay, so you know what's going to happen in a way that maybe most of us don't. <laughs> what's all to show? <laughs> Does he come back? <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I think they're so funny and I I love the some of the details that Mick gives so I just I'm just constantly um, plowing them for ideas Min definitely looks dead but but in the in the <laughs> season one uh, Olivia Cook's character uh, Sid um, looked dead as well and I'm not entirely sure that she's uh, she's dead right no mind you I haven't read that he's written two more, hasn't he? Slow House and Bad Actors. He doesn't stop. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I wondered if he named Bad Actors after he worked with us. Or... I think and he did. He said he did. Yeah. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's a 
term though, isn't it? Um, An MI5 term, yeah, bad, bad actor. Yeah. One of my favourite things about the show is, is how inherently British it is. I can smell the Sutton Arms when you're, you know, doing that. I can sort of give flashbacks to Camden when you're walking along the, the canal with, uh, with Kristen's character. Um, I know, you know, we're here for an Apple TV Plus event, but it feels like this could have been a, a classic BBC series. It, it does feel inherently British, right? I think it did the rounds. I think it went everywhere before Apple picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. For, yeah. Yeah, Mick's um, and Will's involvement with it went goes way back. I think, you know, Channel 4, BBC, you know, the usual sort of places that, that, that you would that you would go with it. Um, I'm amazed. It plays, doesn't it? Yeah. Here. Yeah. You get, yeah. yeah. I'm amazed that. Well, that, that sort of getting at, you know, the fact that it's on a global streaming service it hasn't diluted how uh, local it is. Well, I think we're getting better at, at, at taking on stories from different countries because of that. And actually, I think it's expanding our imagination. So, like, Squid Game, for instance, I found myself thinking, wow, that's what they like in South Korea, is they like their drama pretty you know, intense. <laughs> you could say that again. Um, yeah. It's the only thing on TV. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, I, you know, a lot of Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, you know, we're, we're, we have the luxury, don't we, of, of being exposed to writers and actors and producers and from around the globe. I think it's amazing, actually. A, a few liberties taken geographically. Uh, for instance, Min's character does get to the Edgware Road pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> I, there's, there's, I cover London very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you are filming in London, right? That some of these types of shows might show you London, but filmed in Vancouver or something. There's, there's something on the streets of, of Soho. It's slipping on the streets. And where we shoot um, the actual building of Slough House is exactly well, as, as Mick imagined it in the book. In, in the Barbican, around the... Yeah. yeah, and there's the little Chinese place, you know, the restaurant under the takeout underneath, and yeah, he he used to pass that building um, uh, when he was... What, what did he do? He was, was he an accountant or something? <laughs> and he just used to write these... Uh, he started writing on, a tr on, the, on his train journey into town. Yeah, um, but he would. But he worked at the Barbican and would pass that location every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, you can feel it. Um, I, I mean, talking of the the production itself, you have the. I guess it's a difference or the luxury of, of having one director per season, right? In terms of uh, James Hall <laughs> directed the first Jeremy Lovering uh, season two. That's slightly rare. Um, it's the first. Is it the first? Yeah. We push for that. You, oh, that was something that. So tell me why you wanted to push that. What was what was it? Well, it was it was not it was um, the really the producers. And I think I think Douglas is here, one of the producers, Douglas Sabansky. He he was very loud in wanting one uh, director for the whole six. He said, if if you look at if you, I think they were going to do, you know, you. It's a long, it, there's a long sort of journey of it where it starts, like I said, at the BBC years ago, and then they didn't pick it up, and you, you know, there's that long journey between there and when it finally hits the screen. I think they were talking about doing three episodes and doing it in three, just you know, or four. And a lot of people and <clears throat> Doug pushed for six and said, "Look, look at it as a, a, a six-hour movie rather than, you know." And you commonly get the, the director come in, they create, <clears throat> excuse me, a pilot, and then people take, and then people come in and take over. So it, it, I, I feel it's good, don't you? That we've got. That we have the continuity of the one vision for that for that particular book or that arc. Um, Did the rest of you notice that in the same way that, that, that Gary's yeah. talking about, in that sense of that, that I guess familiarity or yeah, I'd say so because 
there's a shorthand with that director and you stay with each other and you really build the character over those six months that we're shooting and it's it's wonderful because it's often hard for other directors to come in and you know get that rapport but we do we do quite well i think that's what's so brilliant about it i mean i'm biased but you know you it is exciting and it, a series two really builds, you know, you've got the aeroplane, you've got the, I mean, it's fantastic, <laughs> all that, and still goes wrong as well. A bit of life imitating art in the, when we did the end of the first season, um, and remember there was the helicopter, and, and we all, you know, it's almost like we, we are just not slow horses in real life, because we're all trying to do our best acting, and like we're sort of dramatically sort of like dodging the helicopter, and and then all the sets being blown around, these big polystyrene <laughs> boulders are just getting flown around and you're trying to be serious and it's like, it's like Spinal Tap. <laughs> miniature yes. plinth just flying past you. Just keep rolling. <laughs> That's big. Quite big, yeah. Perspective. <laughs> I have to say that the set, they built the Slough House in the uh, uh, in, in inside in a studio it was incredible the detail yeah really beautifully thought out work like almost like an actor doing a, a real sort of they they were like carrot they were they invested Method, so like a yeah, method that's design the word. yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. It was yeah. beautiful yeah you we, could feel how dirty and oh, smelly the offices well, were in season one i go to the window and uh, I watch actually Stanish across the street. And in the corner of its old Victorian sort of sash window, and in the corner was a cobweb and a dead fly. <laughs> and uh, I was impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to see it, but I just thought, holy cow, they've. Yeah, you, you would, when, when you're inside it, and there's the staircase and, and that broken, the elevator that's broken yeah. down. And it's, uh, yeah, you, you forget very quickly that you're on set. It feels like you're in a, it just feels like you're in a building. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's yeah. for sure. Um, you've got plenty more rope for, for Jackson and, and most of the characters, so I guess, uh, you know, the show's been renewed for seasons three and four. I gather you filmed season three, right? Um, that's based on real tigers. I don't expect too much of this, but there's some kidnapping, conspiracy theories, and, and even some new characters. What can you say about season three? I've got blonde hair. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a style choice or plot? It's because, well, Ho fancies Louisa in season three, and Louisa goes. It's called peacocking. Have you heard of it? <laughs> And Louisa goes a bit mental, trying to rid herself of, of her old identity. So she, she dyes her hair blonde, and then you try and copy me, but it's a bit orange yours, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and you're dealing with the Secret Service, I gather, in, in real tigers, right? Gary? Yes? <laughs> How does Jackson laugh? I was just sitting here thinking about... Love it. No, he's here. We'll think about that first. Yes. Um, no, season three is great, isn't it? Lots of action. Oh, yeah. Lots of action. Really comes, of action. Tavern really comes into play. Very bloody. In, uh, in, in, in three. Is it more action based than, than we've seen in, I mean, I guess towards the end of season two it gets a bit like that, but more of that? Yeah, I guess, I, yes, I guess so. But here's the thing, I mean, in Mick's own words, he said, plot is secondary. He, he, it's, the, it's the characters and how, how we connect with them and how they, the dynamic between them. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a story and there's, you know, there's a plot as such, but, um, we, with each season, we get um, we get a lens that looks at the, a, 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 a character. We learn a little more about yeah. that. We see a little bit more of Marcus, and we see the um, and, 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 uh, how, uh, it's, yeah. it's in 
It's interesting, isn't it? Because often there are chunks of a uh, story or, or like in season three that, so I'm off for like three weeks while they did that massive bit of stuff in the storage facility. So there is a lot of, you know, bang, bang, chase, chase. There is a lot of action. Exciting uh, action. And when you talk about the character, I mean, Jackson Lamb doesn't really seem to grow, but perhaps we understand him a bit better? As the show <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, he doesn't grow. <laughs> I mean, it's, you could, I don't know, is it criticism? I don't know. He's, he sort of, he flatlines, doesn't he, at this particular frequency? Yeah. Um, no, he doesn't. He, no. There's, there's, there's no, there's no surprises. <laughs> well, you know, as I mean, there's things in his past that that will that will that will come up. And we learn that sometimes he's a better spy and, and more loyal than perhaps even he likes oh, to be shown. Oh, yeah. And there's this, the relationship with Standish, that is still that whole Charles Partner episode is still yet to be revealed, yeah. you know. Well, look, we're looking forward to seeing more, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure all of you are. So, uh, if you could give up for Gary, Saskia, Augustine, Rosalind, Christopher, and Christopher. All right, that was Slow Horses FYC event. What did everyone think? We're going to head over to the reception now and, you know, have a little party. A little Sunday or Saturday afternoon party. All right, here we are, everyone arriving on the carpet. It's just that, just like last night where we can see the sun's out a little bit. It's still raining, but the sun's out. Let's see what we got going on. That's a wrap on the Slow Horses FYC event. What did everyone think? Have you watched the show? Write it in the comments and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and write comments and follow the social medias and all that fun stuff. I am out of here. <laughs>